Okay, so we've got our landscape, we've got our sky. What we're going to do now is we're gonna look at one other way of doing um, kind of like a sky-based lighting system without dealing with the redshift sky and using those physical properties or anything like that. So we're gonna shut the sky and the sun off. And now we're back to our <laughs> beautiful plain, hideous mountains. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go down to our lights and we're going to choose a dome light. Okay, so we've got our dome light on. Now what a dome light does is basically, right, it's a, it's, it's a big dome, it's a circle of light that basically gives you an even distribution of light across the entire scene. Um, if you've ever seen any of those dome tents for like photographing products or things like that where you set it on there and you can photograph and you get really even lighting, um, it basically does the same thing in virtual space. However, there's some nice features to it. Um, so if I select my dome light and I go down to my attributes, you can see I've got the dome light, I've got some general settings, I can increase the intensity, decrease, right? Exposure as well, same as always. Um, I can set it to a solid color of my choice, right? If I wanted it to be more red, right? Or whatever color I want it to be. Um, it looks like there's fog or something in the scene right now and there's not, it's just that, right, the white tops of these are going to match, right, the white of that backdrop. Um, so I can do a solid color. Um, I'm going to change that. The other thing you can do is you can add an image and this is where dome lights become really powerful um, because you can add what's called an HDRI. It's basically a high dynamic range image. And HDRIs are used in 3D modeling programs and, in, and for rendering to do a backdrop and to create a lighting situation that's complex, that's literally oftentimes a 360 degree photograph of the real world. And it allows you to have that light come in. Now the, the high dynamic range part of it means that the sun that you see is actually bright and intense and illuminates the scene more vibrantly. So let's take a look at how we add that. So there's a folder here. If I had some HDRIs on my computer, I would go that route. But because we have this awesome asset browser, I'm gonna go up to window. I'm gonna go down to asset browser. I could also hit shift and F8 um, to get here, but I'm not gonna worry about that too much. And I just need to type in the search bar here, HDRI. And it's all caps, but it shouldn't really matter. It'll still come up. And you'll see there are a whole bunch of options here um, in this image media section. There's actually 101 um, different HDRI options. Some of these are meant more for like studio lighting. Um, and some of these are meant to be in an outdoor context, right? Um, and so let's go ahead and see if there's a good one with the sun in it. Maybe this one here. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, really, I'm just trying to find something where the sun is highly, is very visible. There's another good one up here, like the second row down, or even this, this first one, maybe let's do almost sunset. Let's just do this, the second image in here. And all we're going to do is we're going to click on it. We're going to drag it and we're going to drop it in this dark gray field in our dome light. And once I do that, it should load up. Um, it may take a second to um, to what's it called? It may take a second to download if you haven't downloaded it before. And then it'll take a second to render. And so you can already see, right? This is a photograph of the world. I believe it may have been procedurally generated. I'm not 100% sure. But we've got the sunlight. The sun feels bright and natural. And you can see how this is illuminating our scene. Now, right, there's nothing I... I I could potentially like adjust the hue or saturation, right? I can adjust the gamma sum, um, right? So there's things I can adjust on this image. Um, and I don't even know if the gamma is gonna make a 
big difference with the there we go yeah so it i had to in order for some of these changes to take effect just as a heads up um you do have to hit this reset button occasionally or the refresh ipr um, because for whatever reason sometimes changes to certain values um when you're working with a dome light and some other things as well don't have an impact um and unless you do that so right so i can adjust the gamma so i can make some color changes there if i want to like um, you know, if I want to really tweak it out and make it like a crazy scene, I can always, right, do some hue adjustments and make these, these, um, you know, and I can, you know, this almost looks more like moonlight on a, in, at night or something like that. Um, right. But you can make it like some alien landscape or whatever. Um, I'm just going to leave this set to zero and I might actually drop my gamma back down to one just because that it's a little bit brighter. Um, and then if I rotate my view now, um, I wanna show you how the sun looks on the landscape. And I want you to note that this gives really strong shadows as well. So hopefully I can actually now rotate this. Oh, for some reason it's back, thank God. Right, so you can see I'm getting the light from that image, oops, um, on my landscape and the, um, <laughs> right, these, these crazy, tooth like mountains in the in the middle of nowhere um but right you can see the reflection of the sun on the surface of these objects and that's part of the reason why i left this so glossy even though you know obviously the mountains are not going to be glossy like that um is because i wanted you to be able to see that there's this like landscape um or sorry that the sun actually shines and reflects off things because it's a high dynamic range image if you just drop in a standard JPEG or something from that you've downloaded online of a sky scene, you're not going to get the same brightness on your on the surfaces of the objects that this is illuminating. It just doesn't it doesn't have enough um, dynamic range. OK. So this is another lighting situation we can use. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And so now it's time to start adding fog. And there's a couple ways that we can do this. There's first, the first way that we can do this is by um, using, oops, is by using um, the kind of the default settings that are available to us in Redshift. And I'm going to rotate this view some. I'm going to see if I can get the sun in there. And maybe what I'll do is I'll, maybe I'll rotate the mountains themselves, but we'll see. I'm going to, this is actually pretty good. I might go ahead and pull this down a little bit. Um, what I'm trying to do is get this set up so we can see something that's close to the foreground, middle ground, background, and then right far in the back so we can kind of see some of the things that are changing when we do this. So in order to add like a general fog to the entire scene, the first thing we need to do is we need to add a redshift environment and that's under the sun and sky rig. So I'm going to go ahead and go down to this RS environment. I'm going to add that to the scene. Now, as soon as I do that, you'll notice that my render view has gone completely white. And that is because the default settings for this are pretty intense. Um, everyone, every tutorial I've seen and followed and the ways I learned how to do Redshift all had basically the same, um, the same uh, advice to take this scattering level and drop it down to one thousandth. Um, we can try a hundredth to start with and see what we get, but if I drop that down to a hundredth, right, you're going to see it's really foggy, but we're actually able to discern, um, mountains. And so you can see that at a thousandth, um, we're kind of starting to get into the range of where color is going to come back in the scene. And so, right, so we've got sunlight coming through here. You can tell it's kind of like not as bright. Some of it's being blocked. If I increase my attenuation, um, that effect is going to get more substantial, right? The, basically what that means is that, right, the lighting, the light color coming from all around is going to be cut back, right? It's going to be attenuated. Um, the anisotropy setting, if we go ahead and do some changes to that, you can kind of see it makes subtle changes to the light, right? If I this is much cooler. This almost feels much 
like a darker, heavier, thicker fog, right? There's a bit more, it almost seems like there's more blue in the scene. Um, whereas if I go up and go into the positive zone, you can see this is warming up some and it's going to get a little bit warmer, right? And so really it's like, you know, what it, it allow this value kind of allows you to, to set sort of like what medium, what haze your light is moving through, right? Because if it's like a, there's different types of um, pollutants in the air that cause different lighting qual lighting situations to arise, right? Okay, so we have nice even fog. Now at this point, height, horizon blur, all of this is not really um, functional the way we have it set up. You can see as soon as I do this, um, <laughs> other things start to look really, really strange, right? There is some g serious glitchiness happening here. And I'm not sure if shutting off um, the scattering and attenuation down to zero, right? If some of this really like starts to help um, that situation, you can see it's like cleared up back there, but it's not really foggy in the sense that we can see any fog in the valleys or anything like that. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and even if I was to, if I boost that blur up and increase the height of this, right, to something significantly taller, let's just say 200, let's see if we get anything there, right? I'm not really getting any changes. And there's ways to fix this. And I feel like the emission isn't even really going to help us too much um, at this point. But this is something we're not going to worry about because we're going to look at some more nuanced ways of, of dealing with this in the future. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm just going to drop this back to zero. I'm going to drop height down to zero and the blur. I'm going to leave it somewhere in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my scattering and put it back where it was. All right. So we have enough and I might add some attenuation to it because that actually just looks really nice. Okay. So I've got this like even fog, but let's say I wanted this to be, um, and actually before we do that, let's rotate our view a little bit. Let's look at the sun again, because what you're gonna see is we're gonna start to get, um, and it may just be too hazy to really see the sunlight through this because it's pretty thick, um, right? But you can kind of see how dramatic and amazing this looks even with it just being like the default flat uniform fog um, if i was to drop this down even smaller like i don't know if i can go how small i can go so zero dot if i can okay so wherever i'm at that's like as low as it can possibly go let's go up to All right, so we can get some of this, but right, we're still going to have, and maybe the anisotropy is really what's what's hammering us on, or the attenuation is really what's hammering. There we go, right? If I dial that attenuation down, um, you can see that I get the haze, um, but I can actually still see the sun and sky behind that. If I pull, If I start pulling that attenuation up even a little bit, it's going to start to obfuscate anything that's in the distance that's right beyond the edge of our landscape. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set this to 0 0.00, let's say 4, right? And so that already is like an intense amount of scattering. It's kind of crazy how, right, for most scenes, this is such, these small values make such a big difference. Oops. I don't know what I just did. I think I just deleted the whole the whole environment. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and set this. I think two was actually two still a bit much. Let's just drop this to one. Back again. Okay. And this is still seems brighter than it was before. But let's go ahead and adjust our view a little bit here so we can kind of see the mountains on either side. Okay, so we've got our scene set. We've got some nice even haze in here, but let's say we want this to be a little bit more real. We want it to vary. We don't want it to be perfectly uniform across the entire image. The way we do that 
is we need to create a special material called a noise volume or an RS noise volume. And what that does is it's going to create noise volumetrically, right? Which all this dust or fog or whatever is a volume. It's not a surface, right? Like the mountains and everything we've really done to this point are surfaces. This is the space right between surfaces and they call them volumes. So we've got a redshift environment and what we need to do is we need to go down to utilities under our new materials. Um, if you obviously don't have the materials manager open, open it up and you're going to go to utilities and noise volume. And once you've got the noise volume set, we're going to go ahead and drag this over and drop it on our environment. Now we should see a change right away, but I don't have this playing right now. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play and we'll see if we see any changes. Now, you're already gonna notice a pretty dramatic change, right? We can see, you know, there's a lot less haze in the way right now. Um, and we can really start to see um, more of the scene, um, but we definitely still have fog. So great, like sometimes you're like, oh, this is perfect. This is just exactly what I wanted. I don't need to make any changes at all, but we should probably, look at how to make some changes on this. So first, um, if we want to get our base level of fog a little bit thicker, right, we could always come over here to our scattering and just increase the scattering just a touch, um, right? And then that's kind of getting us back to that kind of same level that we had before. Um, I want you to, and I don't know if you can see this on my screen, maybe you can see it on yours, but there are little variations across the surface now. So let's go ahead and double click on our noise volume and look at what we've got. It's pretty simple. There's just this RS noise volume um, object or uh, node, and then there's our output, right? Those are our two options that we've got on there. If we have the RS noise volume selected, you'll see that we have um, several tabs here. We've got our preview, not no big deal there. We've got basic, which Again, we don't really care about, um, but we do care about color and noise. So if I hold down shift and click on color and noise, we can open up all three of these. And these are the three that we're really going to be using. And so having those three open is really useful. So um, we're not gonna worry too much about color yet, um, but I want you to look at like the min, the max, this bias and um, the type of noise and some of the complexity and things. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll mess with min and max. So what min and max do is they're going to increase or decrease the um, the uh, the noise, the contrast in the noise, right? So raising the min has really eliminated a lot of it. If I drop the min down, right, you're going to see that it's just going to haze in more and more and more, right? Because it's essentially lightening this whole thing up, right? If I bring this back up to about zero um, and I start pulling the max down, right? You're gonna see um, kind of a similar flattening of the color, right? It's basically, you know, we could, if we crank this the other way, that's sort of the same as inverting it. <laughs> there is the option to invert it as well. Um, but you can see that, right, that starts to add more haze to it, whereas this is sort of like the most contrasty part. Now, the other thing we have here is bias. Do we want it to be, right, biased towards like one side of the fog, right, or right, the other side? And that's something that really, it's gonna be case by case basis. And these are settings you should just mess with and you so you can kind of see it's more clear now that there's this variation um, in haziness across the scene. If I go to this type of noise and go to turbulence, I'm going to go ahead and boost um, that complexity up some. Nine is probably a lot too much. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> if I boost my amplitude gain right, you can start to see, um, like it, it, it's actually usually a little bit more dramatic, closer to zero. Um, and then as you get further from closer to negative one or negative two or positive two, um, 
it gets a little bit thinner on either side. And if you watch what's happening up here in your preview, you can kind of see um, how that noise is um, changing as I'm adjusting my amplitude gain. Right? You can see as I get if I get up here, it's basically it's a lot darker, right? A lot more of the background is going to be coming through. Whereas when I get pretty close, or even if I'm negative, it's there. But if I get close to zero, I'm getting a lot more action here. Okay, so the other things are distortion. If I crank that distortion up some, you'll see here I'm getting like it's more distorted. Um, and if I increase my distortion scale, what that does, increasing the scale actually makes the resolution finer on these things. And so I can continue to, I could increase this more. This is something where I'm not really, right, we're not really seeing any major differences here. Um, these are all like subtle refinements. And there's a point where, um, depending on your lighting situation, you can have some other substantial changes. So now I'm gonna click on this other node, right? The primary node. And if I click on inputs, where is it? Oh, maybe I missed it. Hold on, maybe I missed a tab. Let's go to our coordinates tab. Okay, so the last thing is this overall scale um, in the coordinates tab and these two, or actually, sorry, three other fields that don't want to all show up, um, right? So I have my source is object position. In this case, that's what we're going to be using. Um, overall scale. If I increase my overall scale, so if I was to make this, let's just go up by a power of 10. If I make that 0.1, um, you're gonna see that it does like adjust this chain a little bit. Let's go ahead and make this, let's just make it one and see what we get on the surface of this, right? You can see it's made that much finer, right? So the smaller the value, the bigger the details are on this. So if I was to say 0 0.001, it looks pretty black. There's not a whole lot. <coughs> There's not a whole lot going on there. So I'm going to zero. This is what we started with, right? If I want a little bit more noise, right, I can always just say, let's just say. I keep hitting delete on accident. Um, it's probably because it's late. If I hit 0 0.05, right, I'm gonna get like a little bit finer, a finer noise here. Um, again, I can always tweak things here. So I could say, oh, let's see what happens if I bias it this other direction a little bit. You know, it's a little bit hazier, still noisy. And then there's these different scales here as well. So if I was to set this to like six, not 116, let's just say 16 in these two directions. And again, with the lighting we've currently got, we're not really seeing a whole lot of change, but what this is doing is it's basically stretching our noise this direction while leaving it not unstretched in this direction. So I am going to go ahead and um, save this. And then let's see what happens when we put other types of lights in this scene and turn off this, uh, this environment that we're using. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a point light. I'm just gonna come down, point light. I have no idea where that point light got put in my scene. It's probably inside a mountain. It definitely looks like it's inside a mountain. So let's see if I can actually use my uh, okay, so Cinema decided to stop responding to certain input, and so like I couldn't select the axis or anything, and other things were going wrong. I went to quit. It decided to crash at that point. So I'm back. All right. So the uh, so we've got our scene. I think everything is as we left it. But what I was gonna do is I was gonna go ahead and actually I created a point light. I'm gonna go ahead and lift this point light up out of the mountains a little bit. Um, and I'm gonna move it over kind of just into the center of the scene so I have some sense of where it's gonna be here. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn my sky and sun off. Sorry, not my sky and sun. I'm going to turn off the dome light. So here's my dome light. I'm going to turn that off. Now, I can't see anything at all right now. And that's to be expected. And that's because our... Um, let me go ahead and pull this over. We don't need that much. Our light, right, the intensity of this little light in this huge scene is just underwhelming. So if I go ahead and start to crank this up some more, right, we're going to start seeing more light in our scene. I'm going to go ahead and drop my light down a little bit. Looks like a falling star or something coming into the scene. And you can start to see as the noise, the the bad noise goes away, you can see the good noise. And it looks like I actually set the orientation wrong. These all look like they're vertical striping, um, which may be useful for certain things. Like if, you know, if you had like fog or something rolling up out of a sewer grate or something like that, that might be useful. But in our case, we'd probably want to go the other direction. So I'm going to go ahead and swap one of those. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my node editor, select my redshift noise, and go to coordinates. Right, and that's where I have these values that I can adjust the scale of. And I did 4 up in 16 and 16. It looks like I probably want to change this to 16. And maybe make this 4 and Oh, or maybe what I did wrong is that this should actually, I, I'm doing it the wrong direction. I think if we go smaller, we actually get bigger numbers. Yeah, so now you can kind of see, right, I'm getting some haze and cloudiness that really looks like an overcast night with the moon um, behind it, just using this simple point light. Now you'll note that, right, my color of the entire scene is pretty um, washed out and I'm not quite sure why that is. Let's go ahead and turn the environment off real quick and see if we get... Huh. I'm going to throw another light in the scene that should add substantially more. I'm going to throw an area light in here and see what else is good. if I'm actually okay I do have color it's just the other lights pretty dim so yeah so with the area light on let's go ahead and create an area light like I did and we'll leave that on and let's go ahead and we could continue to increase the intensity of our point light or to increase the exposure I might blast the exposure of the point light real quick let's turn our area light off and just see what we get and oh and turn the environment back on so yeah, you can see, right, with just the point light on, the scene is pretty dark, but as soon as we put the environment in there and we have this light, we you can see that we get a lot more variation. Now, I did set this, right, the noise is pretty small scale. Um, I was trying to kind of show that before everything <laughs> fell apart for me. Uh, and so we can adjust this down. I can reduce this complexity some. And we're going to get, you know, a softer variation there. The distortion and distortion scale is another factor. If I drop the distortion scale down, you're going to see this much more clearly in terms of how this noise looks, right? And generally, right, you don't want to see the hard edges in here, right? It doesn't really look, you know, very real. There's... Um, it's better to have like a little bit more, more mystery in there. If I reduce this distortion down too, you can see that that just um, fans things out a little bit. If I, I can adjust my amplitude gain and you can kind of see, right, the changes that can be made over there. And then there's a final thing that I'd like to show in, um, in this view. And you could switch to the area light if you want and take a look at like how each one of these um, individually impacts the scene and you know how the how the fog looks from these different lights. Um, and if we want to turn both on, 
um, we could uh, have one of them, you know, we could change the color of each one. But before we do any color changes on our lights, um, what I do want to do is say, like, let's see what happens when we change the color here. So first, if we just want this to maybe be, let's start with the white, actually. If we just want this to be, if we want it to all be a little bit thinner, right? I can just pull the white down, right? And I'm gonna have that much more transparency in the fog that I've got. And if I go pretty far down, right? This is a good way where I can control that density, right? It's like, okay, I definitely want some areas that are totally transparent, but I don't quite want as much. And now this really looks a lot more like an overcast night sky. Now, granted it is in front of these uh, structures as well, but there's not much I can do about that. Um, now, the other thing I can do is I can add color, right? So I could say, oh, well, I really want this to be like, you know, evil, <laughs> right? I want this to be like red and dark and I want it to go to black or, you know, maybe I want, maybe this is more fantastical. Maybe um, what I want to do is I want to have this, you know, maybe it's like some like garish, teal color and maybe I can dial that down so it blends better with that red right but so I can start to get you know really surreal and interesting and strange um, lighting situations um, just by changing those two colors as well and so let's see what happens if I turn the lights these lights off and I go back to my dome light and turn that on instead and leave the fog the way it is right so now I've actually got, it's actually really kind of gorgeous, right? But it's, you know, there's um, that variation really helps. You know, it's not as bright as it, you know, the some of the skyline and stuff is totally obscured. Um, but I'm getting a really nice hazy feel where it, and, you know, those subtle color variations in this case are actually you know, kind of working to my benefit. They add a little bit of complexity to the surfaces of these objects that aren't immediately noticeable as it being a layer of fog. Um, but that's there. Um, let's go ahead and make this black. And you can see, right, that I can um, really actually, by using colors here, I can impact the color of the entire scene as well. Um, and I could do like two different reds um, or something like that if I really wanted to warm this up or make one of these a bit more orange, yellow. And so you can see that I can really have a lot of control over what this scene looks like with a very few number of, um, without even really diving super deep into the settings that we have available to us, right? Okay, so I've done this part we've got the general thing done and this is where we're going to end this section of the tutorial right we're going to leave it as it is and what we're going to do next is we will come back in and we're going to add a layer of fog that kind of fills in the base of these mountains as though this whole valley is full of the fog okay